in this video we are going to talk about drugs uh, which blocks alpha adrenergic receptors right so adrenergic receptors can be classified into two groups alpha and beta alpha we have alpha 1 and alpha 2 and beta we have beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 so we'll talk about beta blockers in the next video in this video we are focusing on alpha blockers right so alpha blockers can be classified into two groups we have selective alpha blockers they only act on alpha 1 adrenergic receptors and non-selective blockers they act on both alpha 1 and alpha 2 selective alpha 1 blockers include prazosin doxazosin tamsulosin terazosin right so you can see the suffix osin osin that's the ending so they inhibit alpha 1 receptors non-selective uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2 blockers include phenoxybenzamine and phentolamine right so uh, phenoxybenzamine. Phenoxybenzamine is actually an allosteric inhibitor. It does not attach on the active site, uh, but on an allosteric site. So you see what happens here. There will be deformation of this site. If epinephrine comes, this uh, receptor will be deformed, meaning to say no effect uh, will be induced. Right. So is irreversible it right allosteric inhibition irreversible blockade next phentolamine phentolamine is a competitive inhibitor so it's reversible because this one actually attaches on the active site all right so see if epinephrine goes to this receptor it will not find a place there because it's blocked by alpha 1. The same here uh, blo is blocked on alpha 1 and alpha 2. Right, so this cell, let's say this cell is a smooth muscle in the tunica media of blood vessels, right? And let's zoom it in and see what happens. Normally, epinephrine and norepinephrine uh, bind to the 7-pass uh, receptor is GQ. Right. After binding, it will drop uh, GDP and pick up GTP and it will become active. Right. So it will go to the uh, membrane. On the membrane, there is uh, an enzyme called phospholipase C. Phospholipase C. This enzyme uh, is responsible for converting phosphatidyl diphosphate into uh, inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol or DAG, right? So this will lead to um, release of calcium, combining it with calmodulin. We, at the end, we have calcium calmodulin complex and DAG is for, uh, it activates a protein kinase for phosphorylation. There will be phosphorylation of myosin light chain kinase right and combining with calcium this will induce smooth muscle contraction right so if we block this receptor right in the presence of alpha blocker this whole cascade of reactions will be inhibited at the end we we'll have reduced smooth muscle contraction right so before this before alpha blockers uh, this reaction causes uh, smooth muscle contraction. It's called what? A vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction. But if we inhibit this, it causes vasodilation. If we do vasodilation, we reduce blood pressure, right? Okay, so um, indications of alpha-1 blockers. First one, we have hypertension. Hypertension. Uh, right, so I said um, the mechanism will lead to vasodilation, uh, decreasing uh, total peripheral resistance, and decreasing blood pressure, right? But remember, alpha 
blockers are actually second line drugs. The second indication is a hypertensive crisis which takes place in uh, people taking monoamine oxidase inhibitors like selegiline, right? So if we if a patient is taking uh, these drugs and then eat tyramine containing foods, for example, cheese and wine, this will cause hypertensive crisis. And the best drug to introduce in this case is fentolamine. Next indication, pheochromocytoma. Right, pheochromocytoma is the tumor of the adrenal medulla. Right, the adrenal medulla usually produces catecholamines, that's 80% epinephrine and about 20% norepinephrine. But if there is a tumor, there will be increased levels of catecholamines in blood, causing high blood pressure, headaches, sweating, uh, increased heartbeat, tremors, etc. Right, so we can uh, reduce those symptoms by introducing an alpha blocker, right? We can give fentolamine, but fentolamine is, is reversible. Think of something that is irreversible like phenoxybenzamine. Uh, we can also use alpha blockers in stones in the ureta, right? You can see the uh, stone here. The alpha blockers will relax the smooth muscles, causing dilation of the ureter, right? And the best drug is tamsulosin. The next indication is urine retention, uh, secondary to benign prostatic hyperplasia, right? And the best drug we can use here is uh, tamsulosin or Flomax, right? So... You know, we have two sphincters, right? We have internal urethral sphincter and external urethral sphincter. Internal, uh, we cannot control it, but external, we can control it like uh, voluntarily, right? So, internal urethral sphincter has alpha-1 receptors and um, the prostate, prostate smooth muscle, we have alpha-1 receptors as well, right? So, uh, in case of enlargement of the prostate, the, there will be constriction or massive narrowing of the uh, urethra. We need to release it. We need to, uh, to dilate it a little bit. So, in that case, we can inhibit the alpha-1 blockers in the internal urethral sphincter and in the uh, smooth muscles of the prostate. Right. So, in that case, urine can pass easily. Let's look at the side effects of alpha blockers. Right. So, I told you what happens to blood vessels. Number one, there will be uh, vasodilation. Number two, there will be increased permeability. Right. So, increased permeability will cause edema. Number one, edema. And vasodilation will cause hypotension. Uh, if vasodilation takes place, like for example, in on the skin vessel, it can cause uh, skin flushing. Right. Let's go back to hypotension. Right. You know, in the um, bifurcation of the carotid artery, right, to internal and external, we have a carotid sinus, and inside there you have carotid bodies. Right, and if you think about aorta in the aortic arch, we have um, aortic bodies there in the aortic sinus. Right, so in uh, those bodies, the aortic and uh, carotid bodies, we have our baroreceptors, right, which can sense the level of our blood pressure. Right, if uh, it finds out that in this case is uh, decreased, it activates the uh, sympathetic nervous system which will increase the heart rate and causes reflex tachycardia reflex tachycardia next uh, look here right so you have the urinary bladder here urethra and prostate and if you look here is uh, ejaculatory duct and uh, seminal vesicles right so uh, we are talking about uh, enlargement of the prostate right 
is is enlarged but uh, in this case we have dilated it a little bit we inhibited the alpha 1 blockers right so what can be the side effects urinary frequency because we have uh, relaxed it uh, uh, together with the internal urethral sphincter right so they can be urinary frequency uh, incontinence and because of a dilation of this they can be a retrograde ejaculation retrograde ejaculation the last side effect that i want to mention is intraoperative floppy iris syndrome isis ifis isis ifis i didn't say that right but in this case uh this syndrome consists of poor preoperative pupil dilation together with progressive intraoperative uh, pupil constriction and iris prolapse to the surgical incision right uh, prolapse through the surgical incision right so uh, the uh, most common drug associated with uh, intraoperative floppy iris syndrome is tamsulosin so before doing cataract surgery you need to ask the patient if uh, the patient is taking any alpha blockers particularly tamsulosin right because it's associated with this syndrome thank you so much thank you for your attention peace out